When I was growing up in the 90s, there was a toy line released by Matchbox called Monster in My Pocket. They were basically small, soft, plastic figures that were of, well you guessed it, monsters. They came in different colors and each would have a point value on their backs to represent their power. I remembered them being at Walmart in packs of four and also appearing inside cereals as a prize. There were about 48 in series one and at the time I only knew of the first series as they seemed more popular in the United Kingdom. They had quite a few different series of toys that came out including aliens, dinosaurs, more monsters and I think even insects. Also they had cards, a TV special and an amazing NES game made by Konami simply called Monster in My Pocket. It confused me at the time as it came with a monster named and I know I'm going to butcher this name Blamye, Blamye, something like that. I don't know how you say it, but it came with a monster named Blamye, and the funny thing is, he was not included in series one, so I had no idea who he was or what he was at the time. Plus, the game has a main villain, which is a warlock, which I thought was really cool, but warlock was another character that was not in Monster in My Pocket series one, so as a kid, it was kind of confusing. And being back then in the early 90s, I didn't know of the internet. The internet wasn't a thing to me, but later on I found out that Blamye was actually from Series 3 and Warlock was from Series 2. But how was I supposed to know that as a kid? But anyways, I love the Monster in My Pocket toys and I thought they were really cool. Hello everyone, my name is Luigi and in this episode of Lee Plays, I'm going to show you this hidden gem made by Konami called Monster in My Pocket. To me, this game will always be a hidden gem. Monster in My Pocket on the NES, made by Konami, it's definitely an awesome game. Whether you're a fan of the figures, the cards, whatever, you should definitely check this one out. So I decided to play this one on my Spooktober Halloween series that I'm doing where I'm just playing random games, whether they're scary, they feature monsters, whatever. But this is awesome because you can choose to be a vampire or the monster, and which is funny because like I remember talking to friends in school and stuff and they're like, oh, isn't that Dracula? And isn't this Frankenstein? You know, it's Frankenstein's monster. And this isn't like Count Dracula. It's just a regular vampire. And a lot of people call the monster Frankenstein. And even to this day, people still do that, which is kind of funny in my opinion. But today I'm gonna play as the vampire. I love the monster too, but for some reason I always chose the vampire. I guess it's because when I would play this with my cousins and stuff, they would usually choose the monster. So. I was a vampire more, so let's get started, shall we? So basically you start out stage one monsters in my house and I think the story is basically Warlock tried to make all the monsters obey him so he cast some sort of spell and I guess it backfired and it shrunk all the monsters and that's why they're called monsters in my pocket because they're small enough to fit in your pocket and instead of everybody following him I think they all just shrunk down and you can play as the vampire or the monster and your objective is to stop Warlock and his evil plans more or less. You know, you don't need that much story to, to make a great game, but that's why if you see, there's keys, there's windows, there's tables and books, and there's all kinds of stuff, cause I'm shrunk. That's why it's called Monster in My Pocket. But it's pretty simple. You just run and jump. You got like a double jump. And when you attack, it always kind of threw me off. 
because I think you're throwing a punch, but it looks like you're shooting a little wave of fire as you punch too. And it's not just a vampire vampire thing, uh, the monster does it too, so. Oh, I always thought that was kind of different. But this is a very fun game. I really enjoy it. I guess it helps because I was a fan of the little toy line as well. I mean, there wasn't nothing too special to them, you know? They're just like little plastic, rubbery, kind of like figures, but uh, I thought they were cool. I mean, I always liked monster movies and things like that, so it definitely appealed to me as a kid. Yeah, when you run down the little uh, railing there, you run so fast that it makes you invincible and you can take out them other monsters. Okay, I made it to the first boss. This is Spring Hill Jack. And he jumps around on his toes because he's got his his spring hills or whatever. It looks like he's jumping off his toes, but he is spring hill jack, so maybe his heels. But anyways, took him down quick. And look, people call that teabagging back, you know, nowadays, but I used to call it humping because <laughs> I would like get on top of him and I would start crouching. I did that before it was cool. Big trouble in the kitchen. But yeah, I think I was teabagging before teabagging was a thing. But yeah, this game's cool because you got like Bigfoots and ghosts and all kinds of stuff. This game uses mostly uh, Series 1 monsters, but I think there's several from Series 2 that make an appearance, if I'm not mistaken. But as a kid, I didn't know that. And I wonder why they give you like a Series 3 monster in this game when, uh, it had nothing to do with this game. I'm pretty sure he's not in it. I could be wrong, but uh, I always thought that was kind of strange once I figured it out when I got older. I mean, I thought it was strange as a kid. Like, who is this monster? But this game, um, it's not too incredibly difficult. It can be a little challenging in times especially when you're being like me right now, not taking the time to kill off enemies. Get more stuff on the screen makes it harder. Which is all good. And this is a good uh, two-player co-op game at the same time. And this is a little secret that I found. You can kind of skip some stuff. You can bypass the stove and get you some health down here. But yeah, if you got a buddy, and you're looking for a cool two-player co-op game to play, for the NES, definitely, definitely check this one out. Oh, you ass. I was hoping he's gonna fly past me. And I believe this is uh, Bigfoot, if I'm not mistaken. It's funny because he's in the freezer, because you know, monster in my pockets. So I guess that's like, uh, looks like peas and carrots maybe, and a thing of ice cream. But yeah, you're fighting. <laughs> in a refrigerator, as far as I know. At least that's what it looks like. I always thought that was kind of cool. And I always take this key in here with me. Like, you can fight him without the key, but when you start hitting him, he gets aggressive and chases you like that, and then he'll try to freeze you. And I always thought it was easier just to throw the key at him. I guess it doesn't really matter too much. If he freezes you, you basically stop, and then he runs at you and does damage. And here we go. You can call that teabagging. I always called it humping back in the day. I guess now it would be teabagging, but I invented that before it was cool. I'm just saying. So get ready to see some more of that. Crisis from Underground. Like back in the day when I played this, I tried to figure out what all the monsters were. I think that's like a Hydra or something. I don't know what it is. Um, I used to know like all of them, but now I don't know any of them. <laughs> and I am getting my ass beat. I'm gonna be more careful. I'm getting too talkative. And yes, this is golf balls chasing you. 
makes you wonder if monsters were shrunk down. You know, they're monsters, so uh, they'd be trying to do some crazy shit. So they probably would actually throw golf balls at each other. But yeah, you get to this part and you fall down into a sewer, which I always thought was kind of cool. I'd always just move back and forth for no reason. One thing that doesn't make sense is, I think this is like Karen. I used to call him Charon, but I think it's like Karen. Like, each monster has like a point value. And this is one of the weaker monsters in series one. I think they're like a five. But they take two hits to kill in this, uh, this game, which never made any sense to me. It's like, why would they take two hits when they're the weaker monster? But... I didn't make this game, so, and I really didn't understand that point value of the monsters at the time. And this is supposed to be, I guess, like a soda can, like off in the sewer. This part can be kind of tricky. The soda can stops when you jump, and you definitely don't want to fall off, because I think if you fall off, you lose a life, not health. But yeah, the point value thing, it was like 5 points, 10 points, 15, 25, you know, 20. Like, I think the later series has had even more uh, points, but I don't know how it worked. I guess a 10 point monster would be the 5, but. And this is the Kraken. I always thought its little uh, arms looked weird, but. But this boss isn't too bad. Kind of reminds me of a gopher, or right? like it's got like an itchy nose or something. But yes, this is the Kraken monster. I like how it's so much bigger <laughs> than my vampire, because I think all the toys are about the same size. I think in like series three and four, maybe they got a little bit bigger, which I don't have any of those guys. I need to see if I can, now that we have technology, see if I can order some of the uh, monsters. Can't really, uh, that's about all I can do to this one. I squat on him like that. Now I can do my little dance. But as you can see, the game isn't like too difficult, at least in my opinion early on, but it gets, it gets a little harder. Towering Catastrophe. Like if I didn't play this game so much as a kid, it'd probably be more of a challenge. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this game and comment down below. Let me know, have you played this game? Do you think it's difficult or is it uh, just fun to play? I think those are supposed to be like nails or something. And these guys are like hobgoblins. Um, I got a hobgoblin from a friend. I remember I asked, or asked around to some friends because uh, this series wasn't out for very long, like the toy line. So I didn't have any and I wanted to get more of them. I wanted them so bad that I even wrote Konami was <laughs> and was asking them if I could get like another monster. I even wrote Matchbox and asked them if, you know, I could buy toys from them, but they wrote me nicely and said they were discontinued and Konami had no idea, you know, they're like, yeah, well, we stopped selling those. Uh, the only way you can get the monsters within the game, we stopped selling the game. And these, this part is hard gotta stop yapping you gotta kind of time it right and hit them three times these monsters take three hits the worst part is like missing a jump or getting knocked off into the hole but yeah I ended up getting that hobgoblin um, it came out of a cereal the one that I got from the my friend but it was also released in a series but uh, I asked around trying to get these things because back in the day without internet it was hard to find these buddies so I got a few friends to give me some, and then later on, I eventually uh, bought the entire Series 1. I need to check out like Series 2 and Series 3 at least. I don't know, I just think this game's cool, the music's pretty cool, the gameplay's awesome. It's not like super difficult. And plus, it's full of monsters. I think this monster is called Red Cat. But that's why I'm playing this game. So, 
monster themed Spooktober game. Yeah, I almost burned my booty. But yeah, if I, if I hadn't played this game so much as a kid, it would probably be a lot harder to me. It's funny how much I remember. Can't remember the last time I played this game. It's been a while, but not long enough for me to forget some stuff. What's funny is I could play like a newer game, a more recent game, like Ghost of Tsushima or something like that, and <laughs> I would forget a lot of stuff. There'd be some stuff I wouldn't remember, but a game like this just sticks with you forever. And this is a Gremlin. Be sure to check out my Gremlins video. I did a Gremlins 2 uh, video. It's pretty epic. I like Gremlins 2. I like to get back to it, but it's kind of hard. But yeah, this is a, a Gremlin. Probably not the same Gremlin from Gr Gremlins 2 or Gremlins 1 the movie, but still, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, this one can be kind of annoying because you don't know exactly where he's coming from. And for some reason, on the end of that hook, I always thought it was cheese. It looks like it's a piece of cheese on the end of it. I know it's not, but for some reason, I always thought that. Yeah, I think he's about done for. There we go. See, there's the cheese. And you get points in this game, which is for bragging rights, and after so many points, you get a extra life. Or, you know, illusion. I always thought this was kind of cool. I like the music, and you have, like, Tengus, and, like, I forget what those other guys are called, like, little uh, Sphinx, a uh, Pharaoh. I don't know what you would call them. I don't want to get it wrong, but, like I said, I used to know, like, all the names to all these monsters. Well, I like the music in this level, and it's pretty cool. Because I'm a man of culture. Yeah, I know, like, sometimes, like, the double jump, if you don't press at the right time, like, you can, like, mess up and fall into the hole. So I gotta be careful with that. And this is barbed wire, and of course, the barbed wire hurts you. Ah, I tried to make it across. That sucks, I lost my, my screw. Can't screw anybody now. I think those flying guys are like cockatrices. Probably said that wrong too, but they got like a snake tail. This guy's kind of annoying. He just runs at you and runs into you. <laughs> but if you turn your back, he's like a boo. It's like a boo from Mario. Plus, the, co the enemy combination here is kind of annoying. That's fine, because I can use a bit of a challenge. Oh, shit. Forgot he could jump. Ah, I went up too f far. I could have could have got me a bolt down there, or screw, whatever you want to call that. I call that a screw. But I think this game's fantastic. And I miss, like, Konami games, man. Konami is an amazing company, but they just started making, like, pachinko machines and slots or whatever they're making now. They don't really focus on games as much anymore. Although it's kind of cool they made the Castlevania collection. They're, they're trying, you know. They're trying to be cool. I mean, I know they still make games, but it's not as much. Ever since uh, falling out with them and Hideo, Hideo Kojima, I think this is a Cyclops jumping out of here. I'm not sure what went down, but I really wish we could have got more of Metal Gear 5, The Phantom Pain. I feel like it's a great game, but it's unfinished. Aw, oh, that sucked. That one guy jumping across takes more than one hit, so that's kind of kind of hard to do. This boss is Medusa and she appears in different spots, and you gotta figure out which one it is and hit her. But she's probably gonna pwn me. 
No. I have gotten lucky and she's been like the same one. Like, ah oh crap. She's been like the same one every time. That was my first death. Yeah, if you die, it's cool because you start right back where you were. So that's kind of cool. I know Medusa doesn't take that, that many hits. I was trying to do more damage to her that time. I don't think she takes like a whole lot of damage before she goes down, but it's a pretty cool boss. Definitely want to get on that action. Medusa's pretty sexy in this game. Just saying. I don't know how I would deal with the uh, the snake, the snakes on her head though, because snakes freak me the fuck out. Last battle at Monster Mountain. See, I'm already at the end. That's pretty epic. Yeah, in case you're wondering, that's a T-Rex. They decided to make it a monster. Which is kind of cool because I think later on, uh, Monster in My Pocket, they actually made um, a dinosaur series. But they threw T Rex in here, there's Bigfoots, and there's all kinds of like different creatures. I think that's a Minotaur. I used to think the figure that I got was like one of these guys. And also, there's uh, some enemies later on that I thought the monster that you got with the game was as well. But these are Minotaurs, I do believe. Hopefully I'm saying that one right as well. Oh yeah, that thing there, that's like the last monster in the series. And they made it an asshole in this game. It's just like a regular enemy, but I hate them. And I'll show you why. Because like, if you don't deal with them, and you just try to like, run away from them like this, they come back. So it's not like you can really get rid of them. They're like a pain. I think I remember I just ran from them. Yeah. You just run from them and go down this elevator. Is there a pain in the booty? And the best way to deal with these guys is hit them before they even jump out of the window. If you're quick enough, you can do them like that. Because if you let them all drop down and bounce around, it's, it's a lot harder. Yeah, I don't know why the T-Rex was put in with the monsters, but I think it's pretty awesome. The figure's kind of cool, too. I guess they were kind of thinking of, like, Godzilla or something. They just wanted to have a monster like that in here. And this music, in my opinion, is pretty epic. And you got to fight all the bosses all over again. Every boss that you fought before, you got to fight them all in a row. And if you know where they're going to spawn, that helps helps you get an advantage. Damn it. I don't even think you get health back in between this. Oh! I always thought this was like really cool. And there's no difference in the vampire and the monster, as far as I know. They do the same attacks, that have, have the same damage. They just have different looks, basically. For whatever reason, I always played as a vampire. I, I, I blame my friends and my cousins for that. But I have played as the monster a lot in my spare time. But for nostalgia's sake, I wanted to play as the vampire. After fighting Bigfoot and I seen the screen do like this, I'm like, yeah, they had to do this for the Kraken. Because he's one of the unique uh, 
boss models that uh, has his own little thing going for him. Everybody else appears on the on the screen. He's just kind of like underground and shit. But if you have not played this game, definitely give it a try. I really enjoy it. It's one of the coolest uh, Konami games on the NES. Like back then, they were just hitting it out of the park. Getting greedy. I know Konami probably has a ton of money. They <laughs> might not even actually care, but back in the day, they made some really epic stuff. I always thought you should get some health back in between these fights. In my opinion, I feel like you go through the game and you collect all these lives to have all these lives to be able to do all these bosses, which is funny. It's almost like they planned it to be that way. I'm getting greedy. I think it usually comes from the top, left, and then right. Oh, man. I felt like I didn't touch him. I'll have to see a replay of that. I didn't think I got close enough to him. Maybe I did. I wish I could beat the other Gremlins game this good. Beat it down this good. Even though I'm trying to try out different games for Spooktober, I would like to get back to like games like Gremlins and stuff. Uh, it's kind of weird, like, he has like a weird little, I guess you can say, hitbox on that side. So I guess I did bump him in a ways. Yeah, this should be Medusa again. And of course, she turns you to stone. Instead of having like a Medusa stare, she shoots a beam out at you, which is kind of cool. That makes it easier to date her, you know, like, since you can actually look at her in her, in her actual eyes, you just gotta worry about her shooting a beam at you. So this Medusa is actually dateable. Just saying. <laughs> I just love whamming. But yeah, when you start getting health back, you know, you know you're at the end. And this is the Warlock. I like how the music changes, gets all badass, and this is like the first time you actually see him in the game besides seeing him on the TV. Which is funny, because like, to me, I'm kind of like, why is he, uh... Why is he shrunk down too, you know? I guess his spell turned all monsters small, including him. But it's weird that he's like, I think he's the boss because the uh, cartoon or whatever, the little special they made on it. I think maybe he was some kind of a, had some, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But uh, I always thought it was like unique how they had him. Because when I played with my toys, I used like a, uh, <laughs> I had like a Dracula toy, not like, not like, you know, this vampire or whatever, but I actually had like a little Dracula figure. It was a set of, it wasn't Monster in My Pocket, something totally different, but he kind of resembled this guy, so I just used him instead, because he had like a staff and everything, it's funny. I made my own warlock, basically, you know, imagination. I am not paying attention to this fight at all. You can basically hit him one one good time, sometimes two, if you can get him back to him quick enough. But uh, it's better just to try to hit him once and run. I used to be able to like get away with hitting him like you know two or three times, but I'm not as skilled anymore. See, I can't even can't even hump him, but whatever. I'll do a little jig. <laughs> extra life at the end.
you defeated your arch rival, the Sinister Warlock. Peaceful days will now return to vampires and monsters. I love how the TV says Konami. Ha ha ha! I have returned. Warlock! You thought you defeated me? I'm much stronger than you expected. I read it slow because it comes up slow. Now I will destroy you. What? But I just wanted to say, like as a kid, this like really got me. I thought this was freaking awesome. It was a good idea for a game at the time because I think this may have been the first game that I played where you thought you beat it, but you really didn't. And the boss is like, ha ha, this is my final form, that kind of thing. I think this is the first game that ever done that to me. I mean, this is pretty epic, you have to admit. You think you beat Warlock already, you're getting the end in a celebration, but then the game tricks you and it's like, nah, -uh, you're not done yet. Well, I guess I'll also shout out Super Mario Brothers because as a kid, when I beat 1-1 one, one through 1-4, one, it took me forever to get through those. But when I finally beat Bowser at the end, I thought I beat the game. And it was having a little celebration. Everything was good. But then Toad was like, I'm sorry, your princess didn't know the castle. That killed me. Because I come from like Atari and Magnavox Odyssey and games like that in which the levels weren't long or they would just repeat after a certain amount of time. So I just assumed Nintendo would have been the same way. And when I got to the... 1-4 and I fought Bowser. I thought that was it because I knew in the instruction manual Bowser, King Koopa, whatever you want to call him. I think it was King Koopa back in the day and I still refer to him as either or but when I beat him I thought I was done. Nope. Toad says your princess is in another castle and you got more levels. I was heartbroken. But anyways back to Warlock. And I forget who those monsters are. I don't know if that's the monster from the, the game or not, but that Konami TV is awesome. I want a Konami TV. But basically, you just gotta hit Warlock in the side of his face, upside his fat head, and if you can like hit him and then get him to like look kind of like up before he like does his little eye thing, you can make him shoot off the screen. You won't even have to worry about those monsters coming out. See? Because if he hits the ground, the two monsters will walk out after you, but they're not a problem because you don't even have to attack them. You can just kind of jump them if you please. Say, I'll show you. You don't have to mess with them. I think they take more than one hit anyways, but I guess if you wanted extra points, you could do it. It gets a little laggy at times here, I think. Got a little bit of slowdown. But yeah. There you have it, monster in my pocket. I don't know how you fight him on the TV though. Never understood that, but I sure hope that was the final battle. But now you get the credits so you know it's over. And one thing I wish now, I wish it wasn't the final battle. I wish they would have made a monster in my pocket too. I'll have to look into it. I don't think they did, but this is one cool NES game in my opinion. I really like it. The graphics, the, the sound effects, the gameplay, like the bosses, like it's just really cool because it's based off all these kick-ass monsters. But there you go, that's the end. The end of Monster in My Pocket. Like, the vampire just gets up and walks off like the show's over. And there's that awesome Konami logo. 
Man, they made some awesome games. I really, really wish Konami start making games again. Bring back Monster in My Pocket. I know they didn't have anything to do with like Monster in My Pocket, like creating them themselves, but it'd be cool if maybe the original creators, I don't know what they're doing now or what's going on, but it'd be cool if we could get a sequel or, or something because this game, in my opinion, is an awesome side-scroller. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all the amazing love and support. My Spooktober videos watch time is like through the roof. I know my views are just kind of like eh because I'm a small YouTuber, but the watch time has been freaking amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Definitely want to get on that action. This is pretty sexy in this game.